and, and here is one thing that if, if I make any change to this real object here, then it will be reflected on the whole of the hologram instantaneously. But I need to have access to the real thing. So the question uh, scientists are now facing if, okay, we accept this is a hologram. But the, what they can't get the grips of it, if this is a hologram, well, hologram was made from a real object, like say for example, the, the horse, horse shoe, that, um, the knight. The knight, the wooden thing, had to be real first before we could make the hologram. So this is so real, this, this whole world is so real. So what is the real hologram? What's the real object look like? If this is so real, what is, this is a hologram you're saying. And then you say, well, where, what is the real thing of this look like? Because it was out of that real thing, this was projected. So what is, what is the real thing look like? And that is the question now. The question is to understand that, you better understand the chakras. You better understand the awarenesses, the harmonics. That's the real object. It is that, when the light falls on it, interferes with the reference beam, you get the hologram. So the real reality, the real object is really the awareness, not what is projected as an element there. Um, now, let's, let's say somebody had a heart attack or something, okay? His half of his body was paralyzed, okay? Now, I've, see, I've experienced this. Um, uh, th say the left part was paralyzed. When they put the foot on the ground, this part is okay. They would feel the awareness of the ground. Okay? But if this side is paralyzed, they wouldn't feel the ground. So, because it doesn't feel the ground, does it, does it make sense to say that, that this leg would say, well, there's no ground? Really, the problem is in the awareness. There is no awareness. So awareness is more real than what you're feeling. Okay? So that is how um, the recording side works. That's the real side, the awareness. So I, I would suggest to anybody who wants to do yoga, just be with those two components. More and more awareness of the self and consciousness, i.e. the free will part of yourself. Then you will be more oriented towards the reality of things. Rather than going on the viewing hologram and trying to get hold of these images, which won't come with you anyway when you die, but if you get hold of that kundalini, the, the film itself, that film will come with that human being when it dies because that contains the recording of all the karmas. That kundalini is the one that escapes from the body. That non-local corner is the being in itself. That is the one that escapes. And hence, the body has no awareness in it anymore. It's, it's gone. It's gone. It is that Kundalini that escapes and enters the storage tank of karmas at the top with the recording. Okay? And then that's where it stays while the self being transparent just filters through and comes out with the next slice at the bottom with a new kind of body according to the karma that person had. So it's a fully automatic, fully magnificent and mystical reincarnation process that takes place. And, and, and that's what exactly happens. Now, if there are no karmas in the tank, you're liberated. It's this, you're free. Back to the one. Back to the one. Plus, you can come in the matrix and go out of the matrix as you will. I don't know if you saw the movie Matrix. Neo, in one of the combat situations towards the end, passes through the mirror and the mirror vibrates a little bit in his other side of the mirror. Now he can duck the bullets because he is now free. He is walking on the New York streets. He can see all the other holograms moving back to office, work, this and that, taking trains. They are in the frame. They are in the matrix. 
while Neo is there observing, is in it, but not part of it, just like water in that image. He's in it, but not part of it. And that is what I call true yoga or true liberation. That he's in the movie, but not of the movie. And, and that is what the matrix, and the matrix is that three by three karma blanket. And the idea is to come out of that. That is the mirror. Come out of that mirror and see it from the outside and you'll see all this as a playground after that. Reality is with you. That, that is the beauty of the, uh, the thing. Now, to, to summarize everything, uh, having met personally Roger Penrose and others, and he, he, he personally said, I, I don't know, do animals have consciousness? Or do we have consciousness? It's like he's, he's not sure how to define consciousness purely because here in, on the Western side, they find it difficult what consciousness is. But if you can understand there is a difference between an observer and a consciousness in the light of the hologram, that the observer is the light that passes through because that is the observer. The reflected consciousness now falls onto the real object of awareness, which is the chakras template from which all the awarenesses are coming out, then you realize the whole universe is nothing but the play of lights. One is the consciousness, the other is the reflected consciousness. Those two get together and form an interference pattern and we have a creation. So there is no, cre this creation is projected from the interference pattern, but once it's recorded, it becomes a slipping kundalini because when you make a hologram, whatever you recorded, that's fixed now. You can't change that. But because of the free will given by us, by the divine power, we can, from the recording side, change that hologram. Um, and hence, a uh, new hologram comes out and we see the projection as new. So if you want to change your film, if you want to change your life, Get hold of consciousness, which is your free will, and get hold of your awareness, i.e. the self. Be yourself, and with your free will, you can change. And if you can synchronize these two beams, consciousness and awareness, if you can synchronize, no angle between them, there should be no angle, no angle between these two, i.e. this beam is in tune with that, in zero angle between these two, guess what happens? If there's zero angle, there's no interference pattern. And therefore, if there's no interference pattern, there's no hologram. If there's no hologram, nothing's going to be projected. And this is your speaking voice, this is your silent voice, and by synchronizing your tongue with what you're feeling here in your guts, you have no angle and therefore no karma. But if you have a slight angle between what you are saying and what you're feeling, you have an interference pattern. And that means there's a recording and hence the karma. Do you see that? And if it's a karma, then it's coming back to you. And that's how the reincarnation um, uh, uh, process takes place. So what you said um, earlier on yesterday, I was just amazed because you are right what you said. You know, you have to synchronize yourself. And, and once you synchronize, um, there's no recordings where you're clear. It'll go through. Yeah, it'll go through. And that's where you put your intention, in the gap. Because in the gap, there's no recording because it's the self there. Clear self. But if you're breathing, which is on the, the other, in, in the gaps, uh, out, the, the two ends outside the gap, you have a vibration, that means. And vibration means you are in the elements. If you're in the elements, then you're not the self. And therefore, you have the angle. Therefore, your intention won't go through. The good thing is, if you can synchronize this and this, it becomes the pure will. 
And when you have pure will, you're bound to go through because you and the ultimate absolute are on the same phase. And so that's why we, when we say, wish me luck, you know, really that's a mudra saying the two beams better be aligned themselves. All the best. And we hope for the best. Or, you know, when we say that, that's exactly the mudra. Yeah. So that's what it is, basically. It's, it's very simple but very effective um, way of understanding the, the world we live in.